Hello everybody, welcome to this presentation on Magenta and Music Generation. My name is Alexandre Dubreuil, I'm a software engineer, uh, sound designer and music generation music artist. And I'm going to talk about generative music today. Um, I'm going to do a quick introduction on that and then we're going to live code some music and generate the track together. Uh, then we're going to talk about training uh, the different models in Magenta. And then uh, I'm going to talk quickly about how Magenta integrates uh, with other softwares. Uh, so first things first, um, generative art is an artwork partially or completely created by an autonomous system. Um, that's kind of a good definition, but it's actually a bit boring. Um, I'm going to talk about how I see personally generative music. Uh, first thing for me, uh, it's about me uh, making music without being a musician. So maybe you don't know how to improvise, maybe you don't know how to compose, maybe you need help uh, to have a bit of, uh, of inspiration, and generative music can, can help you doing that. And even if you're a very good musician, uh, maybe you're sitting in front of a, of a white sheet and you have no idea what to do, and this is where generative music can help you. Um, there's a very nice presentation by Monica Dinculescu, she's a, an engineer working at Magenta, uh, and she said that you should build silly things. By saying that, she removes the seriousness uh, around art, you know, you don't have to be an artist to make music. Um, and I really like what she says about that, you can just go out there and have some fun uh, and do some music using generative music. Um, well, we're software engineers and uh, um, uh, software developers, so we build systems, right? We build tools uh, for other people to use. So uh, making generative music is about creating generative systems so that other people can use them. Uh, so maybe it's for artists, uh, for art exhibits, maybe it's just uh, to make an application on the internet so that people can can have fun with it. Maybe it's that crazy new startup idea uh, of a generative radio that generates sound continuously. Um, but this is uh, also about generative music in the sense that you can have live autonomous systems uh, that makes music uh, on, on the fly. And last thing I want to say is that um, the weird and the strange is good. So Brian Eno is a, a famous generative artist, uh, music ge generative artist. Uh, and I think this describes pretty well how I see music personally. Uh, I really like it when music is surprising and you hear something new and you're like, wow, okay, uh, this is crazy, right? Um, so the way this series is good and a generative system make tons of mistakes. Uh, also humans do them, uh, but mistakes are good. They're a way of learning, and they're also a way of creating something new. So, let's talk about machine learning. Um, so, where does machine learning uh, sit in music generation? Well, handcrafting the rules of a painting or a musical style is ki kind of hard. Music has been theorized before. Uh, as you might know, but uh, really knowing uh, what are the rules for uh, good music is very hard. What is nice about machine learning is that you can just throw data at it and it should normally uh, learn some stuff about uh, the general structure of the music. Uh, it can learn complex functions, so basically for arts it's really interesting and especially for uh, music generation. So I'm going to talk uh, about two types of representation we're using uh, in machine learning to do music generation specifically. So the first one is MIDI. So this is a symbolic representation. It's analogous to sheet music or like a physical partition. Uh, basically, it's a set of notes uh, and each note has a pitch, velocity, start and end time. Uh, you can see the diagram here. So it's a plot of time and pitch. And then you see uh, all the notes uh, in the MIDI file. Um, MIDI is interesting because it shows the underlying structure of the music, all right? So you can see the chords, you can see the structure of the, the percussion, for example. Um, but it doesn't define the actual sound, all right? It just defines the notes. So when you want to play MIDI, you need instruments to do that. There's another type of representation, which is, uh, which is audio, so the raw audio waves that you can work with using machine learning. Uh, working with audio is harder because you have 16,000 samples per second 
for kind of a bad quality audio, uh, and you need to keep track of the general structure of the audio, which is kind of hard. Uh, but generating audio is more direct than MIDI in the sense that um, it outputs directly something you can hear. But uh, you don't have actually uh, a structural medium to, to work with. So I'm going to talk about some network architecture uh, for music generation, generation specifically. So the first one are RNNs, so recurrent neural network. They have two properties that are very interesting for music generation. The first one is that they operate on sequences, and the second one is that they, rem they can remember past events. If you look at the, at the diagram here, I don't know if you, yeah, you see my cursor. Um, here, that little, arrow, that little arrow means that uh, for one given cell, the output of the cell is going to be fed uh, as an input at the, as the next one. This is the recurrent part. So that means we can operate on sequence, and that means we can remember the output of the previous cell. So that's very important for music generation. The problem we have with RNNs is that they're hard to train because of a specific problem. It's called the vanishing gradient uh, problem. Basically, your gradients, uh, as they get uh, uh, transferred in the network, they get multiplied by small values, and then at some point, they vanish. Um, so it makes long-term dependencies hard to learn. So what we do is that we use LSTMs, so long short-term memory cells, which are here. And basically, those have mechanisms inside the cell to learn to either forget or to keep information. So that's very useful for music generation. Uh, for example, if you're currently learning a chord and you're two notes in the chord, you want to remember what's bef what was before. Uh, and if you're starting a new chord, you probably want to forget what was before, uh, so the cell can actually learn that. Another network architecture that is useful for music generation are vari variational autoencoders. Uh, autoencoders auto -encoders are a pair of network, basically an encoder and, and a decoder. What happens is that the encoder here on the left will take the input and reduce it to a lower dimensionality here in the middle called the latent space. And then the decoder on the right will, try, will take the latent space and try to reproduce the input. Um, why do we do that? Uh, because the latent space has a lower dimensionality, it forces the network to learn important features. Uh, but what is really interesting about variational autoencoder is that the latent space follows a probability distribution, meaning that uh, you can sample from the latent space and the, the musical sequence you're going to sample from the latent space are all going to be musical. All right? So if your network is trained properly, uh, what you're going to sample from that, from there, is going to be to sound musical. Another thing is that if you take two points in the latent space, uh, you can actually interpolate between those two points. So you draw a vector between the two points, and then you sample along that vector, and it's going to smoothly, um, it's going to be going to be possible to sm to smoothly interpolate from one musical sequence to uh, another. Um, Last network architecture I want to talk about is WaveNet. So WaveNet is a Google project. They're using that to do text-to-speak uh, generation. So basically synthesizing uh, raw audio. Uh, so they do that sample by sample. And in um, Magenta, there's a WaveNet autoencoder. So what it does is that it learns its own, own temporal embeddings, uh, which are here. So you actually also have a latent space. Um, in, in, in a WaveNet autoencoder. Uh, what is nice about that uh, is that you can sample also from the latent space, so you can sample audio, so you can sample small audio clips of one, two, three, four seconds, and you can also mix different uh, audio samples, which, which is really nice. If you've ever wondered, like, what is the mix of a sound, like, of a cat and a bass, well, you can actually do that using uh, the WaveNet autoencoder in, uh, in Magento. Mm. So here's a short list of some networks in Magenta. Uh, we're going to use some of them today. We're going to use Drums RNN and Melody RNN to generate uh, MIDI sequences. Uh, we're also going to use Ensynth, the WaveNet autoencoder I've talked about. 
uh, to generate audio clips. Uh, you should use Gensynth, uh, I'll talk about it later. Uh, I'm also going to talk about Music VAE just shortly at the end when I talk about uh, Magenta.js. Okay, so on to the live code. Uh, we're going to generate a small track together. Uh, we're going to split that in two steps. The first step, I'm going to generate some uh, audio clips, so small clips of one second that we can then sequence uh, using, uh, using MIDI. Uh, so in the second step, we're going to generate MIDI. I wrote a small app that makes us interact with the system, and we can either decide to keep the sequence we have or generate a new one. Uh, so step one, we'll make everything sound like a cat, because, you know, cats. Um, we'll use NSYNC uh, to mix cat sounds with other sounds. Um, so I have four sounds here that I've chosen. Um, so this is just like a bass sound. All right, this is a metal plate being struck, okay? So you can see the attack here. This is a cat. Ooh, a cat. Uh, and then that's a flute. So what are we trying to do here? We're trying to find new sound uh, textures, okay? So we want to have like notes to sequence. Uh, we want to find new uh, audio type of ideas. So that's what we're doing here. Um, Magenta can help you find new sounds and discover new things. So that's what we're uh, trying to do here. Uh, no, that's not good. Okay. So I'm going to go in IntelliJ here. Um, so I've prepared a small app. So it's a TensorFlow application. It's loading Magenta. Um, it's calling that method here. Uh, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, it's going to call uh, three method, the encode method. And it's, it's taking uh, two WAV files in input. And it's returning the encoding. So we remember we're in, wave, in a WaveNet auto encoder. So what we're doing is that we're encoding the waves uh, into the latent space. So that's uh, two points in the latent space. And then we're going to mix that together. So we're going to sum uh, both elements. Uh, and then we're going to synthesize that. So actually decode that thing and then, um, and then actually have uh, a resulting audio file that we can listen to. So we're going to write that code. So here I have a list of paths. So I'm going to iterate on that. There's a method called load audio from uh, Ensign Utils. So I'm going to use that. And then I need to pass a sample length and the sample rate. Um, so here, the sample rate is 16,000, uh, actually because the model is. Uh, the sample length, uh, every, every sound you've heard are just one second long, so it's faster to process. Uh, so it's sample rate times the number of seconds, so it's 16,000 also for the sample length. Um, I'm just adding that to here, and then we're going to call a library called FastGen, which is in NSYNT, which is not really fast, but it's called FastGen anyway. Uh, we pass uh, the audios. No, uh, this is not a good method. So we're encoding. So I'm passing the audio files. I'm passing the checkpoint and the sample end. So the checkpoint here, what, what is going to happen is that uh, Magenta is going to load the model, is going to input the audio in the model, and then is going to encode in the latent space. Uh, so I'm returning that. So here we're just going to check our dimensions. So it takes a numpy array of batch size and sample length. Uh, so I'm just going to do, just going to transfer like this, array of audio. Um, so now there, there's going to be two audio files um, mixed together. So here, uh, the dimension, uh, the, the network is going to be initialized with a batch size of two. So both, um, both, uh, both samples are going to be encoded at the same time. Uh, now for the mixed method, so how do we do that? Well, actually, we take the first encoding, we sum it with the next one, and then we scale it back down. All right. 
pretty easy. And then finally, we're going to synthesize that sound. Um, and we do that by using the FastGen library. Uh, we pass the encoding mix, the save path, and then the checkpoint. Um, here, the dimensions are a bit different. So it's batch. Yeah, OK. So because I have only one encoding here, I need to wrap that in an array. OK, so I'm just going to make a breakpoint here, and I'm going to execute that. So as I said, um, Encent is pretty slow. Uh, because it's actually generating um, the resulting audio like sample by sample, so so it's it's really slow. Actually, there's a new model called Gensent. It's been uh, it's been in Magenta since 2019. Uh, I had the code already written for Encent, so I kind of kept it. Uh, but don't do as I as I did. If you want to do that, use Gensent because it's just way faster. All right. So I'm not going to call the synthesize method here because it's going to take like 15 minutes. Uh, so I'm just going to stop here, and we're going to listen to the result. So uh, I se I selected I, I did all the the combinations of the different sounds together, and uh, I selected some of them that I thought would be interesting. So here's the the mix of a bass and a cat. <laughs> So what is interesting here is that um, Ensynt was trained on, um, was trained on uh, instruments data. So it actually doesn't know what a cat is. So it kind of have to guess what a cat is. So it, it gives that a bit crazy like creature sound that you hear here. Uh, this is a bass and a flute. I've selected this one because the audio is, 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 is crackling. So what happens here is that the model will sample extreme values and then it's gonna, gonna, going to correct itself. So that's where um, you hear that. Um, we, did, we did a scaling in the code. We divided by two. You can scale it back down a bit if you hear that kind of stuff. So this is the bass plus the metal sound. So it sounds like a bass note. Um, so metal and a, and, and a cat. Sounds like a guitar or something. I really like this one. The harmonics are really cool. So it's like, you know, it sounds like a guitar or something. So then once we have that, we can, we can use that to, uh, as a basis to uh, compose new sounds and use them in a track. So step two, we're going to sequence what we've done. So we've done some audio. Now uh, we're going to do MIDI. So we're going to use drums RNN and melody RNN to uh, generate MIDI to play some samples. So I've prepared a small application here, which is not started, but you can see the interface. Um, beautiful interface here. Uh, there are two models that are going to run. Uh, there is the drum RNN model, and there, there is the melody RNN model. What happens is that for both of those models, we have two possible actions. We have generate or reset. So if we like what we hear, we're going to keep generating. And if we don't like, we're going to reset it. Um, so we're going to code uh, those two methods. The, the rest of the application is already there. Uh, and then we're gonna, going to see what nodes are inputted by the network here. So let's go here. No, let's go. So uh, first method to write is the reset method. So there's, um, there's a class in Magenta which is called node sequence. So it's basically everything that is represented as MIDI in, in Magenta is represented using a node sequence. So basically, it's a MIDI implementation. So you have the node, the pitch, the velocity, and everything. Um, so if we have a, an existing sequence we don't like and we want to reset it, we're just going to um, instantiate a new node sequence, and then we're going to loop that. So I've already uh, written the loop method that we can just call here. 
So what happens is that um, because uh, we want to have like an endless stream of music, what's going to happen is that uh, the, the MIDI player is going to advance on the timeline. And then once it's at the end, we want to take the previous sequence and then loop it. So what we do is that we take it and then we push it further on, on the timeline. Uh, so this is what is happening in the loop method here. So we take the, the previous sequence, we just shift it uh, forward in time. Now for the generate method, which is a bit more interesting. Uh, the first thing we need to do is, uh, is instantiate the generator options. So the generator options are going to be passed to the network for the generation. And uh, here you can configure uh, the generation algorithm. So one of the parameters is the temperature. So the temperature is, not, is an argument to the softmax uh, function that is used uh, to sample in the network. So default value is, default value is one. Um, over that is going to be a wilder, like crazier generation. And under that, it's going to be a more conservative, like less random uh, value. So um, just, just for the melody, actually, I'm going to use um, a bigger value just because yesterday I did a practice run and um, the sequence were kind, of, were kind of boring. So I'm going to crank the temperature a bit. Uh, yeah. And then next thing we need to do is tell the generator um, uh, where do we want our generation um, to happen. So we're calling a new generate section. And then we're just saying start time is here. So it's going to be uh, where our player is, is going to just take the next measure uh, and then output uh, in the future. Like next thing is going to is going to read. generation and time. Uh, so now we're good to go. We're getting the sequence generator, uh, passing the name, the bundle and the configuration. I'm going to explain that after. So this is the generator. And then we can call the generate method using the previous sequence and the options. So what is going on here is that we passed uh, the old sequence. Uh, so what we're doing is that we're generating a new sequence using the previous one. This is very useful if you want to generate something in a, in a specific team. So maybe you like uh, jazz music and you have that very nice sequence you really like. You pass that to, to the network and it's going to generate something based out of it. So what it's doing is that it's loading the, the network, it's uh, inputting, well, initializing the network with that sequence, and then it's generating something uh, out of thereafter. So here I have sequence. So I think we're good to go. I just want to show that method, so we're not going to write it. But um, so a sequence generator for the RNN networks, uh, they all have the same in interface. So you just got to take the sequence generator. So here we have drums RNN and melody RNN, depending on which of the two models we're using. Then we're downloading and reading the bundle file. So basically, the bundle file is a uh, is a TensorFlow checkpoint, basically. Uh, a bundle is something specific to Magenta. There's just a bit more metadata and packaging utilities around it. Um, and then you were loading a specific config. So <clears throat> when you train, you can configure the way you train your network. And basically, there are different pre-trained networks in Magenta, and you can load a specific one using the configuration name. I'm going to talk about that a bit a bit later. Uh, okay, so I can restart the app. So while we're here, uh, so I'm using Ableton Live to do the sound synthesis. Um, you don't need to, to know what it is. Uh, I'm just going to say that here there is a, there is a line here 
that receives MIDI from Magenta. So basically, I have a MIDI port that's open, that's called Magenta Out, and the MIDI is getting out of Magenta and entering in Ableton Live. It's entering on channel 10 for the drums. This is the default channel uh, for the drums in the MIDI specification. It's actually nine, but it's one indexed in, in Ableton Live. And then it's inputting on channel one here for the melody. And basically what we have is a pretty classic drum kit, like numeric drum kit, a 101, uh, 808, sorry, um, drum kit. And then uh, we have just a synthesizer here, just wavetable synthesizer. And it's going to play the MIDI we're outputting from, uh, from Magenta. So we have our application here. Uh, we've coded the, the methods behind that. So we're going to start by creating some, some drums. This is always a stressful part because I have no idea what the, net, the network is going to do. Uh, because we're starting uh, from a blank state, it can generate anything. I could have given it like something specific. Okay. I'm going to reset that. Um, we could have given him, uh, you know, something, uh, some something to to work with. So maybe you 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 like something specific, and we could have initiated the, the network with that, but we didn't just to see uh, what it can do. It's it's not awesome, but we're gonna keep that, and we're gonna keep generating to see if it does something nice. So now it's taking the same sequence. Okay, getting there. So each time I click here, it's going to take the same sequence and then uh, generate something based out of it. I'm really not a fan of the cowbell, actually. I hate that sound. I'd like to have a bit more instruments, actually, okay. Not a big fan, but we're gonna stick with that. We don't have a lot of time. Uh, so let's try the, the melody here. Um, so let's just leave the generation. doing like yesterday. I don't have a lot of, of notes here. I'm going to reset that sequence and try to have something a bit more interesting. I'm going to do the same thing for the drums. I should have put more temperature, actually. Um, it's, generating, it's generating something very conservative, uh, so there's not a lot of notes here. So uh, taking a temperature a bit higher, like 1.2 or something like that, uh, We're getting some. Okay. 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 So 
I don't know. Um, maybe at some point you stumble into something you like. So what you can do is just generate a bit more out of it and, you know, say, okay, I like that. Um, let's listen to the drum again. That's kind of okay. Um, so here we have... Um, so we have the samples uh, that are used for the drum kit. So maybe what you want to do is use um, samples you've previously generated and make your own uh, drum kit. So we're going to put uh, some of the sounds we've generated um, uh, in the drum kit. So I'm going to use like the 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 metal in the cat, yay. Uh, here. I'm just going to rescale it because it's uh, all over the place. Like this. Uh, like this. Oh, yeah. Okay. So now it's in the drum kit, so it's going to play at some point. So maybe we're at some point that we like what we hear, so we iterate with the music generation system we have, and then at some point we're like, okay, this is cool, I'm gonna make a track, right? Uh, so what you can do is that you can record the MIDI to actually save it for later. So either you ask Magenta to write the MIDI file on disk, right, and you just save it, and then uh, afterwards you can take it back, feed it back to the network, and continue improvising with it. Or you can uh, record it in Ableton Live or your favorite music application. So that's what I'm doing right now. And because we're in Ableton Live, we can also like record um, the audio clips that are playing and then make small audio clips like of four bars, eight bars, something like that, and then start composing a track from there. All right. So this is the audio getting recorded. And then I can just uh, cut, cut that, go into arrange mode, arrange, arrange mode, mode and then just um, put the, the samples to make, to make a full track. Okay, so we've live coded something, we've did some music. Um, let's take a step back. So what we've done here is that uh, we've, um, we've created a small application that helped us improvise around a team, around an idea, right? I wanted to do a track composed of a percussion, a melody, and a cat. Uh, and I wanted to be able to interact with the system uh, for it to help me improvise around the team. So was it perfect? No, you, you, you saw it, it wasn't. Uh, we had happy little accidents. Uh, thank you, Bob. Um, maybe we wish we had more control over the sequences. Maybe we would like to draw the sequence and that the system um, improvises on that. Um, maybe we would have liked to have a specific musical style because I used like techno style uh, drum kit and melody, but uh, maybe you want to do jazz, maybe you want to do classical music, uh, or a specific structure, so it was kind of a mess, because uh, it's two different networks that generate independently, but they don't generate together, so you can uh, actually do better than that. And to do better than that, you actually need to train your own models, all right? Uh, so in Magenta, the pre-trained models are actually pretty good. Like you've heard, you know, it's uh, outputting uh, nice rhythmics, pretty good melody. Uh, but if you want to do a specific style like jazz, a specific time signature, or if you want to do both like drum and melody at the same time, uh, you'll need uh, to train your own. Um, so I'm going to talk about just quickly about two data sets 
there's the lax data set which is a pretty big MIDI data set it's kind of old but it's pretty good um, it's been matched with the million song data set which is metadata so in the lax data sets there are only MIDI files and then it's been matched <coughs> Uh, with MSD, uh, meaning you can have like the artist, the release, the genre per track and everything. So actually what you can do is extract all the MIDI for a style, for jazz for example. And then once you've done that in <coughs> In your MIDI files, you can uh, extract specific instruments. So in the MIDI specifications, there are a way of knowing what track or what instruments. So if you want to have only like the piano, the violin, you can just extract that. Uh, another da data set uh, which is very recent and very high quality is the Ensynth data set. So it's the data set that was used to train the Ensynth and Gansynth um, uh, networks. In Magenta, so that's a an audio data set. Uh, it's small audio clips of uh, four seconds that represents notes or instruments. So that's why the clip we've generated sounded like single notes. It's because the backing data set actually was trained on single notes. So like um, a single guitar chord or a single piano note or something like that. Um, training Ensynth is uh, pretty much impossible, but uh, training Gensynth is kind of achievable. You need a lot of resources, but it's feasible. Um, so what if I want to create like a drums RNN, um, I want to train a drums RNN network on uh, jazz, jazz rhythmics. How do I do that? So I go to the lax data set, I, f I filter and I extract all the MIDI sequences for, for the drums in the jazz style. And then I use, um, I, I use that to convert the MIDI files to note sequences. There are other formats uh, that can be used like ABC notations or music XML files. Um, but here I'm using MIDI. Uh, once you have that, you create the sequence exam uh, examples. Uh, those are going to be fed to the network for the training. Uh, it's also going to split in training and eval sets, uh, so 10% and 90% here. What is interesting is that there's something in Magenta called a, pap a, a pipeline. Um, this is the thing that uh, will um, convert different formats and then extracts the information uh, from the MIDI, uh, from the node sequences. And here you can see uh, the distribution of the length of the MIDI files you, uh, you have, which is pretty interesting. It's going to drop like uh, the ones that are too short and the ones that are, are too long also. And then you can start the training. So uh, you call drums RNN and train. If you want to train something else, uh, the command is going to be a bit different. So for example, melody RNN. Sorry, uh, or music VAE uh, underscore train. So it's going to depend on, on the network you're using. Now you pass the configuration. You can create a new one if you want to do something specific. For example, if you want to change the time signature, you probably want to uh, code a new configuration for that. You can pass the hyperparameters here. This is a small network um, of two layers. Uh, so it is going to train faster, but it's going to be less efficient. Uh, so basically it's using TensorFlow, so you have your checkpoints here and everything. So you can just launch the tensor board and go see uh, where your model converges. Um, training on MIDI is kind of easy. I mean, if you have a decent GPU, it's, 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 it's very accessible. Um, so I want to finish on interaction with the outside world. We've already done that, all right? Uh, we've used Ableton Live for the sound synthesis, but actually the MIDI was coming from, uh, from Magenta. MIDI is just everywhere. So basically everything uses MIDI. So because Magenta can send MIDI and write MIDI files on disk, uh, you can interact with pretty much anything. So I've used Ableton Live. This is my tool of choice. There are others like Reason, Fruity Loops, whatever. Uh, there are other software synthesizers like Fluid Synths. Um, if you have a hardware synthesizer, you can uh, also use that. So if you have a MIDI keyboard at home, you just plug it in and then you can uh, tell Magenta to play your keyboard, which is pretty cool. Um, and then there's a project called Magenta JS which is an amazing project. So basically it brings Magenta in the browser. 
uh, Magenta JS uses TensorFlow JS, and basically some of the models have been ported to Magenta JS. Um, most of the main ones, actually. Um, it's amazing because it's in the browser, but it's kind of bad because it's in the browser, uh, because actually outputting audio or MIDI out of the browser is kind of a pain. Okay, uh, real-time sound application coming from the browser is not the best idea, but it's really, really nice to share um, a music generation application with a broader audience because you know it's it's hard to tell someone who's not a developer to go in the command line and just type something, or maybe write Python code like we did. Uh, so it's kind of our job to package things that are accessible for uh, non-technical users to use. Uh, so there are a couple of examples here. So I've talked about Music VAE before. Uh, what is going on here is that on the left, uh, in in green, you have uh, a sequence that's been generated from Music VAE. So it's been sampled from the latent space. And then on the right, there's another sample. And then this is the interpolation I was talking about. So all the little white dots you see. Um, our notes, and then it's, it progressively goes from uh, one sequence on the left to the other sequence on the right. So this is um, a Magenta JS interface. So as you can see, it's a nicer interface than what I've done. Um, another one, which is pretty much uh, what we did today, but again, in nicer packaging. On the left, you can draw a drum sequence. This is on the, um, this is in red. And then the network, the drum RNN network, is going to generate uh, generate something out of it. Uh, there's something we haven't talked about. So here you can see the temperature we've talked about. Uh, the tempo, we haven't used it, but uh, you can also change that. Uh, and also the swing. So there's a project, a, a network called Groove VAE that, um, that was uh, released uh, recently. And you can add, add Groove, actually, or swing to, uh, to the generated nodes. Um, another one which is very, very cool is called Gen Harp. So this is from uh, a guy named Tero on Twitter. Uh, he's very active in the Magenta community and he's doing great stuff. This is basically what we've done with Ensign, so mixing two sounds together, but he's doing it live in the browser using Gensynt. Uh, this is amazing, and it sounds amazing. So on the left, you're, you have like a sound sample. On the right, you also have a sound sample. And in the middle, you can see the import interpolation between both. So dynamically, you can interpolate between the two sounds and play it on the keyboard. Uh, it sounds really, really good. So using Magenta JS is uh, is easy. Basically, there are a couple of ways of doing that, but basically the easiest way is just bring the old the old Magenta package uh, uh, in one shot. Uh, another way of doing it is that you can bring like individual models uh, here in your dependency, uh, and then you instantiate the model you wanna you wanna have. So here I'm using Music VAE. Um, you're using uh, then your uh, uh, getting the checkpoints you want to use. So this one is Trio, so I told you about training multiple instruments at the same time. You can do that with Music VAE. So this is a network trained on drums, uh, lead, and, and, and bass. And then you can call uh, the method for uh, generating the samples. So here it's called sample on drums RNN would have been generate like we've done in, in Python. Uh, using uh, Magenta Studio, um, so yeah, we've been using Ableton Live, but we uh, we didn't have Magenta uh, in Ableton Live. It was just MIDI coming in. There's actually a project called uh, Magenta Studio that um, it's kind of crazy how they did it, but it's actually a plugin. So it's actually Magenta sitting in Ableton Live. It works pretty well. And what is nice is that it integrates with the clips you have. So if you have uh, like two MIDI clips, you can just, uh, for example, uh, load them here in the interpolate method. And then it's going to load the clips and output it in a new clip, which is very well integrated, actually. It's very, very nice to use. 
Okay, so uh, to finish off, I'd like to uh, talk about two projects I'm working on right now. So I'm working on a project with an artist called uh, Claire Malrieux. We're working on Dream Bank. So the team is kind of meshing uh, Dream. So what we've done uh, is that we're generating the audio and we're generating also uh, the image. Uh, and yeah, the, um, the audio is generated using Magenta and Ableton Live. It's pretty much what we've done today, but just on a bigger scale. Um, we have our exhibit in Paris in two weeks, so if you guys want to come, just drop me a line. And then another project I'm working on is that um, I'm uh, writing, on a, uh, writing a book called Hands-On Music Generation with Magenta. It's going to be out on Pack Publishing in January 2020. So check that out if you're interested. It's been written uh, for uh, non-musical people. So if you don't know anything about music, you can just pick it up and have fun. Uh, the slides and the source code are on my website. Uh, and there are some articles on Magenta also if you're interested. Uh, thank you for your time and have a good day.